Wow, look at this group. Things are, things are loosening up COVID-wise, or at least COVID safety-wise. We're keeping the COVID and we're getting rid of the safety. <laughs> Indoor concert goers and, and fans at sporting events here in LA will no longer have to show proof of vaccination starting April 1st. I guess they figure if we get hit with a new variant, they can just say April Fools, but um, <laughs> it's good news. I think Lakers fans will still be encouraged to wear masks, but not because of COVID, just because how embarrassing this season has been. <laughs> Speaking of embarrassing, we got a full day of nonsense from the Senate on day two of, of the Supreme Court confirmation hearing. You been watching this, Guillermo? No, Jimmy. No, I didn't think so. <laughs> because it's infuriating. <laughs> Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson uh, made an opening statement yesterday. He got praise from both sides of the aisle. Republican Senator Chuck Grassley said he liked it. and His wife liked it, too. He, so Judge Jackson got the coveted Barbara Grassley seal of approval. But not every Republican was impressed. Senators Marsha Blackburn and Josh Hawley were like, you lost us at Ketanji. But... <laughs> This is Josh Hawley. Um, uh, this guy, what a creep this guy is. He's a senator from Missouri. Spent much of his 30 allotted minutes reading a list of child porn videos from a case the judge worked on. He did. Um, oh, that's not a joke. That's... <laughs> He's trying to, like, throw meat to these q nuts and also smear a woman who is a mother of two daughters and quite clearly not pro-child porn. But here is um, Josh Hawley sharing an elbow bump with Matt Gates, a fine, upstanding American who very innocently Venmo's teenage girls because he, he's nice is why he does that. But despite the <laughs> gratuitous attacks, Judge Jackson's been very cool under pressure. Uh, they don't have anything real to criticize, so they've been trying to portray her as being soft on crime, which is interesting because she's been endorsed by both the International Association of Police Chiefs and the Fraternal Order of Police and the Band Police. Even Sting is in her corner. But <laughs> it's funny listening to the same people who let the president get away with trying to overthrow the government call anyone soft on crime. But this is how it goes. This is a real tweet from the Republican Party's Twitter today. I honestly thought this was a joke. KBJ, Kentaji Brown Jackson, crossed out, uh, and they write CRT, which is critical race theory. I think your dog whistle's busted, guys. Everyone can hear it now. <laughs> if you haven't been watching this hearing, this will tell you all you need to know. We decided to compare and contrast questions from the Republicans and Democrats on the Senate Judiciary Committee. You, Judge, are opening a door that's long been shut to so many. I know that a great many people are extremely proud that you are here today. You are showing so many little girls and little boys across the country that anything and everything is possible. I could not stop being just joyous that you were sitting in my office, and I couldn't stop bringing up to you the historical nature of this. We have never had this moment before, and I just want to talk about uh, the joy. I want to try to understand here, is it your view that society is too hard on sex offenders. Why in the world would you call Secretary of Defense Rumsfeld and George W. Bush war criminals? He's been called by many as very anti-Semitic. He called you skunk who stink up the place. You don't agree with that, do you? Do you, do you agree with this book that is being taught with kids that, that babies are racist? Thank you, Senator. Yes, thank you, Senator. Meanwhile, <laughs> we are uh, getting more details about what happened behind the scenes of Donald Trump's presidency from uh, Kid Rock, of all people. Kid Rock sat down for an interview with Tucker Carlson last night. Tucker flew all the way to Nashville, uh, I guess, to try to get some secondhand testosterone in his blood. Kid Rock told him <laughs> a crazy story about a visit to the White House during which he, Kid Rock, was asked to weigh in on uh, the standoff with Kim Jong-un. But then it comes out, and it's very... It's reworded and more political and, like, you know, a little politically correct, and I'm like, just being pretty... You know, we're looking at maps and I'm like, you know, I'm like... Am I supposed to be like in on the <laughs> <laughs> I make dirty records sometimes. I'm like, what the <laughs> I do it here. You didn't think you'd have a hand. What do you that? think we should do about North Korea? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't think I'm qualified to answer this. <laughs> yeah, no, you're definitely not. Um, for about two minutes, Kid Rock was our Secretary of Defense. I guess. Trump felt we needed someone to counter Chairman Kim's strategic counsel uh, on defense, so he called in 
the kid. In the end, Kid Rock recommended a coordinated package of targeted sanctions in combination with incentives for denuclearization, and well, now here we are. This was some interview. Tucker was so excited to be with a rock star, he was laughing like a seal with a mouthful of sardine penises. You say it every album everyone does. This is my best album. <laughs> I make dirty records sometimes. <laughs> I do it here. <laughs> Those people are all gay. <laughs> That's nuts. Tucker and Kid Rock's love story together. Like. <laughs> I'm not embarrassed. I'm a fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tweet that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good point. You go f yourself. <laughs> then Kid Rock gave him a wedgie, a swirly, and sent him home in tears. <laughs> Meanwhile, Eric Trump can't. Poor Eric Trump. He can't get Sean Hannity to come to his house. He was on Fox News from the basement of the home his father bought him. And you know how the, with these guys, you sometimes can't even believe how oblivious they are? Well, here's High Pitch Eric trying to make something out of the fact that Joe Biden went on a bike ride. When you see a guy riding a beach cruiser in the middle of the day, this is the commander in chief of the United States of America. I mean, what message does that send the world that is literally in the middle of, you know, just. So, you know, Eric, it's, um... Well, yeah. When your father was on the show... Uh, I guess he forgot about the 250 rounds of golf daddy played during his presidency. <laughs> In fact, on the very day Eric was busy inducting himself into the Hypocrite Hall of Fame, guess where his father was? Much pressure. <laughs> this would increase the LPJ ratings, even though she'd shoot 190. The ratings would go skyrocketing. Nice. Nice. Yeah. There's our hero, Golf Lundgren, uh, golfing and leering, <laughs> trying to keep his putter in his pants on the course. It was an exciting day for the former president. The U.S. Court of Appeals ruled that Stormy Daniels owes Donald Trump almost $300,000 worth of attorney's fees. Of course, Trump took a victory lap. He released a statement, said, as I have stated many times throughout the years, I never had an affair with Stormy Daniels, nor would I have ever wanted to. The ruling was a total and complete victory and vindication for and of me, right? You, you paid a woman $130,000 to cover up an affair you didn't have? Stormy said she will sooner go to jail than pay Donald Trump. I don't blame her. This is almost, imagine this first. First, you have to have sex with Donald Trump. Then you have to pay him for it. <laughs> I, I gotta tell you, I, I mean, I know this is a technicality, but I think that makes him a hooker, doesn't it? <laughs> Some sad news from the world of syndicated TV. After 31 years on the air, the Maury Povich show is going off. Maury Povich, who is 83, imagine being 83 Still driving into work, putting makeup on that face, and heading out onto a stage with a bunch of women who don't know which of the seven toothless weed delivery guys is her baby's absentee dad. I don't, maybe Maury arrived in hell and he just doesn't know it yet, but whatever the case, we're gonna miss him. And so before he opens his final manila envelope full of deadbeat DNA, we decided to put together some of the most beloved and moving moments from The Maury Show. When it comes to 10-month-old Naraya, Tyshawn, you are not. <laughs> you are not. <laughs> you are not. <laughs> You are not. You are not. When it comes to Kiki, sir, you are not the father. the father to all of us. You may notice on your way into our studio, they're having, uh, they're getting ready for the Academy Awards across the street. This is Hollywood's biggest night. And so we went out on the street to ask passersby to weigh in on some celebrity scandals we made up. None of these things actually happened, 
but that never stops the American public from sharing strong opinions on them in tonight's very special Oscar edition of Cancel Nation. We're talking about some of the people at the Oscars who were canceled this year. What do you think of cancel culture in general? So I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated, I'm concerned about cancel culture uh, because I think we're overcorrecting. Legendary skateboarder Tony Hawk is being canceled for giving the leader of ISIS's son skateboarding lessons for $1 million. Should he still be allowed to present at the Oscars? Absolutely not. Why? There's a line that you can't cross. But the kid really wanted to learn a kickflip. So what? So do I, but it ain't gonna happen. The movie Tick, Tick, Boom, very popular this year. Is it too soon to be celebrating the Unabomber? always too soon to be celebrating any terrorist. And the hit song from the movie, Male Bomb, women's groups are upset about it, saying, why can't it be female bomb? Well, because we don't get, we don't have female boxes. We have male boxes, and that's M-A-I-L. Would, would you like to mansplain that to women of why they shouldn't be upset? I'd love to. We have, we don't have female boxes, we have male boxes, and that's M-A-I-L boxes. Best Actress nominee Jessica Chastain told people if they want to get the Tammy Faye look, they should eat those little silica packets that come with beef jerky. Should she be canceled for that? Um, I think I'm a vegetarian, so whatever she said doesn't affect me personally, but I think for the greater good of society as a whole, as long as she released a thoughtful statement apologizing for her actions, she should be in the clear. She didn't apologize, she doubled down. Oh no. Wes Anderson was snubbed for his film, The French Dispatch. He's getting a lot of heat after he got up saying, you know how you could tell a French guy's been in your house. Should he be canceled for that? I mean, it's 2022. No. But is it wrong to say you can tell a Frenchman's been in your house because the garbage has been eaten and the dog is pregnant? If there's something behind it, yeah, yes, but no, there's nothing wrong with it, no. In the film Power of the Dog, Benedict Cumberbatch, at the end of the film, gets the power of the dog, finally being able to reach all the way over to lick himself clean. Does that make you more inclined to go see that film? Yeah, actually, yeah. That's a, all right, it's a stupid premise, but it's, it's something I would watch. It's something I would watch, yeah. Kristen Stewart, nominated for the film Spencer, is in trouble for giving a stranger on the subway a titty twister. Should she be canceled for that? Huh? Best Supporting Actor Kirsten Dunst from the movie Power of the Dog has been canceled for showing up at the BAFTA Award in a coat made entirely of Labradoodle. Should she have been canceled? Absolutely not. Why? I mean, back in the day, we had fur coats and mink coats, and that's what we wore, and no one had a problem with it. Look right in there and let Kirsten Dunst know she should be allowed to wear a dog. I mean, you should be able to wear what you want. Even a dead dog. Not a dead dog. <laughs> You're not gonna get me to say that! Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. Click below to subscribe to our YouTube channel, or if you want to be that way about it, don't.